here lead me. Oh, thy great Jehovah, in the name of Jesus, that you may be glorified, that your people may be edified. It's in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We pray and we ask it all. We give thanks and glory. Amen. And amen again. If you know it was grace that brought you, come on, give God a big praise. Honk your horns. Make some noise. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We truly, truly, we give thanks, all thanks, all glory, all honor, and all praise to our great God. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, through the Holy Spirit's power, truly, we say hallelujah. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. And certainly we give honor to where honor's due to, he said it, my pastor, he, my mentor, my father in the gospel. And I tell you what, we have an easy friendship. Some folks have to work at their friendships and relationships. But he and I, we don't have to work at it. We never have. Amen. It just flows naturally. Amen. If we weren't preachers, I could still be friends with him. Amen. Amen. That don't mean we might be so good. Amen. But <laughs> I thank God we're preaching and uh, we're better. But uh, I thank God for him. Thank him for being such a gracious host. Amen. When I pitched this idea to him, he just, he just accepted it very warmly and very graciously. And so we're just so thankful to him and to our host church. Greater friendship, amen, and to the offices, amen, of this church, and amen, my home church, and I'm proud of that, amen, over here on this cornerstone right here, and my name is on there, and I'll forever be grateful and proud of that, amen, truly, truly glad to be home, and, and certainly to my beloved Union Baptist, amen. Well, God has made me the overseer of that. Amen. My 10th year with Union Baptist. And I'm so thankful to God for the opportunity that he gave me and that they gave me. Amen. My wife is here right across the street. There in the car. She's able to be here today. My mother is standing beside, beside her car and my car over there. Thank God for her. And truly, we're just thankful for all of you today. Today is a wonderful day. And what a glorious day. What a magnificent day. What a hallelujah praise day. That we come today to worship a true and living God. A risen Savior. Amen. And I'm glad about that. I hope you're glad about that also. Now I want to say this to you. The Lord woke me up early this morning out of my bed All right. and he told me today is today for you to preach yeah. and I'm not going to let you stay in this bed yeah. uh -huh. I'm going to get you up amen All right. and so I've been walking around the house all morning uh -huh. walked outside all morning looking up into the sky and talking to God and I want to tell you right now if you didn't come here to hear the word of God right. you need to start your car up and move on <laughs> because you're going to get some word today like you get every Sunday down here. Amen. But I came to preach God's word because he's worthy and that's the least I can do. Amen. For a Savior who's done so much for me. So there is a word from the Lord today. How many are glad about that? How many are glad about that? God's word is still going forward. I want to let y'all know, and I'm not going to talk too long. Amen. COVID couldn't stop it. Mean men in history couldn't stop it. They tried. Amen. But it's still the most circulated book in the world. Amen. And his word is still going forth. Even at this moment. Amen. And we thank God for that again. From the great book of the gospel according to St. John. St. John chapter 15. St. John chapter 15. Starting at verse 14. 
Starting at verse 14. St. John chapter 14. In these years of preaching, this is the first time I've preached outside. So there's always a first for everything. Amen. Amen. And I'm glad to be here today. St. John chapter 15, verses 14 through 17 will comprise our text. And I will be reading from the NIV translation. The NIV translation. And the words of Jesus read as thus. You are my friend. If you do what I command, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. Somebody say friends. 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 For everything that I learned from my father, I have made known to you. You did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you so that you might go and bear fruit, yes. fruit that will last. Yes. And so that whatever you ask in my name, the Father will give you. Yes. This is my command. All right. Love each other. Yes. And the church said amen. amen. If I could use a subject this morning, I would use, he's the greatest friend of all. With a subtopic, you can know he's your friend. Subject topic, he's the greatest friend of all. With the subtopic, you can know he's your friend. The Lord, since the beginning of time, has made known that there is a friendship relationship between him and man. Exodus 33 and 11 says the Lord would, would speak to Moses face to face as one speaks to a friend. Psalm 25 and 14 says the friendship of the Lord is for those who fear him. And he makes known to them his covenant. Yes. Amen. Amen. He's the greatest friend yes. of all. Yes, he is. I'm not going to waste any time. I'm not going to mess around this morning. Preach, preach, preach word. This Easter morning, Resurrection Sunday. Yes. I want to talk to you now about Jesus. Yes, sir. It's all about Jesus. Amen. Praise the Lord. And what it means to be a friend of his. And what it means for him to be a friend of ours. Yes. And when I think of the word friend now, mm -hmm. I think about my life yes. and the experiences I have had with friends. All right. I have had many friends and so-called friends. Yes. I suppose some are still my friends, yeah. but I never see them or hear from them. My Lord. But there's one thing I've learned about friends and friendships. And that is, everyone who says they're your friend don't mean it. All right. Do I have a witness here? A famous man, a famous man once said that when you die, if you can count on one hand five people who were your true friend, friends, you have had a very fortunate life. How many know that's true today? How many know a, a true friend is hard to find? Most people, I would say, are fair weather friends. Well, they are with you when everything is good and well. Yeah, yeah. But as soon as everything starts to go bad in your life, they cut out and leave you high and dry. Amen. Do I have any witnesses here? Amen. To illustrate this, I heard a story of two friends who were camping in the woods. And as they were having their morning coffee, they heard some rustling in the bushes coming toward them at full speed was a very large grizzly bear. One of them started pulling on his running shoes. And his buddy turned to him and said, you don't think you can outrun that grizzly bear, do you? And the friend says, no, I don't need to. 
All I have to do is outrun you. That's how a lot of so-called friends are. They run at the first signs of trouble. It has been said a friend is one who walks in when others walk out. But thank God every now and then in life, you come across one or two people who are true friends. They are the ones that are there doing fair weather, bad weather, good weather. In spite of your faults and everything that's ugly about your personality, they still love and accept you just as you are. That's a true friend. Yes, sir. Today I came to let you know yeah. there is a man, yeah. a Lord, yeah. a Savior, yeah. a Messiah yes. named Jesus Christ. Yes. Amen. Who is a kind of that who is that kind of friend yeah. and much more. Yeah. Over two thousand years ago. He proved to be the greatest friend we could ever wish to have. Amen. My question to you today is, is he your greatest friend? Yes, I want to let you know again, he's the greatest friend of all. Yes. And you can know he is your friend. Yes. Amen. If you are here today, all right. and if you don't know if Jesus is your friend, all right. or if you are his friend, all right. I have three points. Three things from the scripture text All right. to help you know for sure. Yep, sir. Amen. Yep, sir. I know I'm in, in the middle of a point church. Amen. <laughs> Y'all used to getting some points with the sermon. Yes, sir. And I'm going to give you three quick ones today. Amen. Yes, Preach your sermon. Preach it. The first point is you have to do what he says Amen. if you want to be his friend. Amen. And if you want him to be your friend. You have to do what he says. This is what Jesus was teaching his disciples here in John chapter 15. It was here in chapter 15 that Jesus was on his way to the garden of Gethsemane. It was a few days, can I tell the story, before he would be hung and crucified on the cross. It was in the garden of Gethsemane, you might remember, that Judas and the soldiers came. Yeah. And Judas sold out Jesus for 30 pieces of silver. Yeah. It was just a few days yeah. before he would be hung on a Roman cross. Yeah. Jesus was teaching the disciples mm -hmm. and talking about the vine and the branches. All right. Setting forth the basis of Christian living. All right. Now I won't go through all of what he said. But in other words, he was teaching the disciples mm -hmm. and us yeah. that apart from him, mm -hmm. we can't do anything, Amen. especially obey his word. Amen. There's no chance you can obey God's word mm -hmm. when you are not connected to Jesus. And I said all of that, amen, to say, to say this, because if you want to be his friend yeah. and you want to be him to be your greatest friend, you have to be connected to him. Amen. Just like the branches are connected to the vine. Do I have a witness here? Amen. You got to know him for yourself. Yes. And the only way you can know him is you have to be born again. Amen. If you are connected to him and if you know him for yourself, All right. you have been born again. And the only thing, amen, amen, the only thing you can do, amen, to live for him is you have to do what he says. Amen. You, have, you have to obey the commandments in his word. Right. Now that leads us to what he said in verses 14 and 15 again as I hurry on. Jesus said again, you are my friends you are my friend. if you do what I command. Yes, I no longer call you servants because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. Isn't that good to know that we can be a friend of Jesus? Amen. For everything that I learned from my Father, I have made known to you. Amen. Here in verses 14 through 15, Jesus will let his disciples know that they would prove they were his friends by obeying his commandments, his instructions. In verse 15, Jesus is letting them know just how much he truly desired 
for them to be his friends. He wanted them near him. He wanted them near his heart. Jesus wanted a different kind of relationship, amen, than what he had had with his disciples. Because up to this point, amen, it, it, had been, it had been the master, it had been the master teacher and the pupils, amen, his students, his followers. Now Jesus is letting them know and by extension, he's letting us know yeah. that we can have a close, intimate relationship with him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Isn't that good to know? Amen. Yeah. Thank you, Lord. Masters and servants did not have close, intimate friendships. All right. Servants only came near when there was something to do. All right. But a friend is welcome anytime. Do I have a witness? A servant is only told what to do, but a friend is told why. A servant will bring the food to the table, but a friend is able to eat at the table. Amen. Thank God we have a friend in Jesus. A servant and a master. Jesus was and he still is. Still is. I mean, the master. Amen. And the disciples were still to serve him and his church. Yes, yes. Jesus was telling them, my brothers and sisters, that they could be his friends. Mm -hmm. But also, don't get it twisted. All right. He was still their Lord and King. Amen. All right. Amen. Yeah. And because of that, he commands and they obey. Amen. And we must also Jesus was not implying in verses 14 through 15 that his friends were his equals. Jesus, let me tell you, is not buddies with anybody. Jesus is not your buddy. He's not my buddy. He ain't nobody's buddy. He's still Lord. He's still Savior. He's still Master. He's still God. He was only offering to share with them what belonged to him. That's what he was telling them. Jesus said in John, John chapter 14, if anyone loves me, he will obey my teaching. My father will love him and will come to him and make our home with him. He who does not love me will not obey my teaching. These words you, you hear are not my own. They belong to the Father who sent me. Yeah. The Apostle John said in 1 John 2, 3, and 6, he said, we know All right. that we have come to know him yeah. if we obey his commands. The man who says, I know him, yeah. but does not do what he commands is a liar, uh -huh. and the truth is not in him. Right. But if anyone, yeah. I said if anyone, if anyone, if anyone obeys his word. Yeah. God's love is truly made complete in him. Yeah. Whoever claims to live in him must walk as Jesus did. Yeah, Lord. You have to do what he says Thank you, Lord. if you want him to be your friend. Thank you, Lord. He's the greatest friend of all. Yes, yes. Amen and praise God for that. The second way you can know Jesus is your friend is. Mm -hmm. You have to know You've been chosen. Yes, sir. Somebody said chosen. chosen. You have to know that you've been chosen. Yes. This is what Jesus said to his disciples in verse 16. He says again, Jesus, listen to what he said. He said, you did not choose me, but I chose you and appointed you to go bear fruit. Fruit that will last. Mm -hmm. Then the Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. And the church said amen. amen. I told you earlier. Yes. In John chapter 15. Mm -hmm. Jesus is days away from being crucified yes. on the cross. Yes, sir. In verses 14 to 15. Jesus was assuring the disciples of who they were. And the close standing they had with him mm -hmm. as friends. Yeah. Particularly if they obeyed his commandments. Mm -hmm. Now here in verse 16, he continues to reassure them by further explaining why this relationship 
this friendship exists in the first place. It is simply because he chose them. Somebody say he chose them. These 12 men were chosen by Jesus. Amen. Not because they were special. Not because they, de they deserved to be chosen. Not because they were good. Right. Wasn't because they were holy. Right. Wasn't because they were sanctified. Right. Jesus chose them yeah. because they were incapable of choosing him. Amen. Why were they incapable of doing it? It was the same reason for all of us. They were lost at one point and did not know him. I say to you today, if you have been saved, it's not because you chose him first. It's because he chose you first. You have some witnesses here. Somebody ought to be happy over that. The Bible says we love him because he first loved us. If you want to know he is your friend. You have to know he chose you yeah. first yeah. and not the other way around. Yeah. The Apostle Paul in the New Testament, he called this election. Right. Or we often refer to it today as the doctrine of election. Uh -huh. Paul uses the word predestined. Yeah. I mean, I'm on my way to closing. For new and elected and chosen in the New Testament uh -huh. right. to describe this teaching. The children of Israel are an example of this. Right. They were God's chosen people mm -hmm. to be an example to the rest of the world. Amen. God chose Abraham, yeah. a man who was called a friend of God. Yes, election, thank God for election, yeah. is an act of grace and mercy from God. Yeah. Whereby in eternity past, God chose those who would be saved. Paul said in Ephesians 1 and 11, mm -hmm. in him we also were chosen, yes. having been predestined yeah. according to the plan of him mm -hmm. right. who works out everything yeah. in conformity with the purpose of his will. Mm -hmm. Aren't you glad that it was God's will? Yeah. That if you're saved today, yeah. God chose you to be saved. Yeah. Thank God. Yeah. Thank God. Hallelujah. Jesus reminded the disciples that they had been chosen or saved. Yeah. Therefore, they could call him their friend. Right. I want to ask everyone here today, have you been chosen? Amen. Have you been saved by God's grace? Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Saved people are friends with God because they trust in him. And they obey his word and his will. Yes. True friends of God yes. have accepted his free gift. Yes. His free offer yes. of salvation mm -hmm. through his son, Jesus Christ. Yes. You have to know you've been chosen. Yes, He's the greatest friend of all. Yes. Yes. Well, this is the third and final point. And I'm going to leave it with you here. The third and final point in being Jesus' friend. And him being yours is. Yeah. You have to love one another. You, Somebody say you have to love one another. Yeah. It's still the greatest command in the Bible. Yeah. Jesus was asked by a smart elically, smart elically lawyer. Yeah. What's the greatest command in the Bible? Yeah. Jesus said you have to love the Lord your God. Yeah. With all your heart, your mind, and soul. Yeah. And the second is like unto the first. Yeah. You have to love your neighbor as yourself. It's still the greatest command in the Bible. What did Jesus say to the disciples in the text? I'm almost done. In verse 17, he told them, this is my commandment. Love each other. In verse 12, it's not in our text, but Jesus said to them, my command is this. Love each other. As I have loved you. Yes. Do I have a witness here? Yes. Brothers and sisters. Yes. Jesus told the disciples. Yes. What they had to do. In order to identify themselves. As his friends. Yes. Yes. The reason being is simple. 
Jesus was the highest personification of love. Yeah, yeah. He was love in flesh. Yes, sir. He was agape love mm -hmm. yeah. in flesh. Yeah. He brought love from heaven's door yeah. down to earth among us. Yeah. He had demonstrated this. He had exemplified this yeah. and modeled this the entire time he had been with the disciples. Jesus was teaching the disciples yeah. that they would need this love yeah. for one another after he was no longer with them. Yeah. Come on, stay with me now. Right. And that time was drawing near. Right. Yeah. Church, on this Resurrection Sunday, yeah. Jesus is still saying the same thing to us. Right. His commands have not changed. Right. His words have not changed. And I want to let you know he has not changed. Street, man. Because he cannot change. Yeah. Because his word hasn't changed. Right. If you still want to be his disciple, yeah. you if you still want to follow him, yeah. if you still want to know him, yeah. if you want him to be your friend, yeah. you have to love people. Yeah. There ain't no way around it. You ain't gets me when I hear folks say they love God, amen, and they love Jesus, but they won't speak to their neighbor. Won't say hi to the neighbor. Act like they don't care nothing about the neighbor. They only love black folks. They only love white folks. But they don't love everybody. If you want to be a friend of Jesus, you got to put, put, put away that stuff. Put away that mess. And you got to be like Jesus. Jesus loved everybody. He loved everybody. The Apostle John tells us, again from 1 John chapter 4, if anyone says, I love God, yet hates his brother, he is a liar. I want to say a big liar. For anyone who does not love his brother, whom he has seen, cannot love God, whom he has not seen. And he has given us this command, whoever loves God, must also love his brother. Yeah. You have to love others. Yeah. You can know you are his friends. Yeah. Somebody ought to say amen. Yeah. Somebody ought to say praise God. As I come to a close on this Resurrection Sunday, my heart is filled and thankful for a friend and a Savior like Jesus. He's a friend who sticks closer than a brother. He's a friend who would do what no other friend would do. Some folks may lay down their life for a good person, but ain't nobody gonna die for an old dirty sinner. Only Jesus, I said only Jesus, would die for dirty sinners. The Bible says he was a friend of sinners. The Pharisees said they criticized him because he was hanging around a prostitute. He was hanging around the drunks. He was hanging around all of those dirty folks. And they said he is a friend of sinners. But aren't you glad he's still a friend of sinners? Aren't you glad that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for the ungodly? And God, all right, what a friend we have in Jesus. Oh, our sins and griefs to bear. You know, it ain't all right. Jesus said, No greater love has no one than this than to lay down one life for one's friends. And God, all right, that's just what he did. Because the Bible says they whipped him all night long, they beat him. They slapped him and had the nerve to put a crown of thorns on his head. It died all right. But he died. I said he died. He died. Went all the way up to Calvary. He went all the way up to that Roman cross. The Bible says they laid him down, stretched him wide, put spikes in his wrist and spikes in his legs. But he's a friend like no other. He's a friend that died for us 
while we were yet sinners. And God, all right, he's the greatest friend of all. But the Bible says they raised him up just like he said he would. He said, if I be lifted up from the grave, I'll draw all men unto me. He died. I said he died. If you know he died, say yes. Say yes. He died. The Bible says the Roman soldier spear him in the side. Out came water. Out came blood. The Bible says the earth began to rock like a drunken man. The Bible says the sun refused to shine. The Bible says they got out of the grave and walked into the city of Jerusalem. The centurion said, this must be, it's got to be the son of God. He got all right. But I'm so glad he's like a friend like no other. I'm so glad he's the greatest friend of all. But the Bible says he died. Yes, he died. They put him in a borrowed grave. Stayed there all night Friday. Stayed there all day Saturday. But early, I said early, early, Sunday morning, he got up. What a friend we have in Jesus. He's the greatest friend of all. He got up with all power, saving power. Isn't it all right? Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Oh, yes. God bless you. God keep you. I hope you know he's the greatest friend of all. Give him praise right now. Praise the Lord. He's the greatest friend of all. What a friend we have in Jesus. Thank you, preacher. Thank you, Pastor. Pastor Ghana, for that beautiful message. We extend the invitation all those words that he has spoken to us such a spiritual moving word today you have to do what he says if you want to be a good friend to his that's, right, that's, right. that's what he said you have to know that you've been chosen that's what the preacher said yeah. you have to love one another yeah. above it all that's what the preacher said what a friend we have in Jesus. He's the greatest of them all. We extend the invitation now. The door is open. We want you to come. If you have not given your life to Christ, we want you to come and be blessed by choosing the greatest friend of all. Closer than a brother, a true friend, will be there in that time of need. 